So now that we have a nice layout in place, let's look at creating our edit and delete pages. So if we open up our application under app, HTTP controllers, admin user controller, and we come down to our edit method, we can see we already have user type hinted here. So what Laravel does is because we pass the ID on the edit button, Laravel will grab that user with that ID. So if we just call Laravel's built-in die and dump method, which is just DD and dump out the user. If we jump back over to our application, uh, let's just edit the admin user. And you see it's got the admin user out of the database for us. So if we just come down to the original array, we can see here we've got all our admin information already within the edit method for us. So what we need to do is we need to also grab our roles out of the table. We just use our app role model and then in our edit function, let's create a new variable called roles and that will equal role and we'll get all the roles. And then all we need to do is just return a view. So we can do a return and we can call the view method and we want to return a view from our admin users folder. So we can do admin dot users and we'll call this one edit and again we need to pass our roles and users down to that view so we can just use the with method again and we're just going to pass this an array I'm just going to drop this down on new line to make it easier to read and we want to pass down our user obviously and that is in the user variable as it's been automatically injected by Laravel here and we also want to pass down our roles and we can do that with roles and then pass down our roles variable where we got all the roles here. Obviously, the next thing we need to do is actually create this view. So under resources, views, admin, users, I'm just going to copy this index.blade.php and I'm just going to rename it to edit. So this just gives us the basic layout. I'm just going to delete the table. Now up here, we can give this a new heading of edit user. And I suppose we could actually just pass in the user's name here edit user and we can just say user name and we can do that because we pass down the user's data here in the with method okay so the next thing we need to do is create a form that we can edit the user with so let's just open up a new form tag and um, we're going to give this an action and we're going to use the laravel built-in root method again and this is going to go to admin dot users dot update and there's a second parameter we need to pass in our user so we know which user that is we're editing. Now we need to give this a method and we're going to put post in here and I'll show you why in a moment. So most browsers really only support post, but if we take a look at our roots, we can see our admin users update method is expecting a put. So for the moment, Laravel has a nice way to fake this. So if we just open up our curly braces, we call a built-in method and we call a built-in function called method underscore field, then we can say it's going to be a put. So even though we're sending it as a post, Laravel will pick this up and recognize it as a put. So also we need to pass in our CSRF token. So to do that, Blaze has a helper built in. So it's just at CSRF. And now on this edit page, we're just going to assign roles. So because we passed the roles down in the view, let's just loop over them. So we can do a for each roles as role. And we'll just end that for each. And then inside of here, let's create some checkboxes. So I'm just going to call a div with a class of form check. And then we're going to create an input and it's going to be a type of checkbox. And the name for it is going to be roles as an array. And that is because people could check multiple roles for a single user. And then the value is going to be role ID. It's the ID of the current role in this for each loop. And then we're going to give this a label and it's going to be a label of the current role name. And then after our for each loop, we just need a submit button. So we're going to do a button of a type submit. I'm going to give this a class of BTN and BTN primary. And for the text, we're just going to say update. Now let's take a look at this in the browser. We see we have all our roles being listed from the database and our update button. 
and also in our header we're saying edit our admin user let's come over to our users controller again and that's under app http controllers admin user controller and this request is going to come into this update method here so let's just die and dump on the request so let's say we want to make this user a admin and an author and we just click update so if we just open up the request and look at the parameters we can see under the roles array we've selected the role of one which is admin and the role of two which is the author so let's now carry out the update so let's just remove this die and dump and we're going to grab the user so we're passing that user in from the form you remember up in our root here we're passing in our user model and then on that user model we can call our roles method and remember on our user model we created that roles method with a belongs to many relationship and then in our database seeder we were calling the attach method and that allowed us to pass in a single id of a role we wanted to attach to a user now because we're passing in an array of roles we need to call a slightly different method and we're going to call sync and this allows us to pass in an array of ids that we want to link from the users to the roles so from our request we can just get out that roles array and now that will sync all the roles the user has selected in the checkboxes and attach them to the user roles relationship and then after that we simply just want to return and we can do a redirect and we'll redirect back to the root of admin dot users dot index let's give this page a refresh and you see that links us back to the index page so we actually haven't got a way to see whether that update worked because we're not showing the roles for each user so let's look at adding that in now so over in our index view let's create a new table header and we'll call this roles and then in our table so because we have our user model here passed down we can call our roles relationship that we created and we can say get me the roles and i want to pluck the name of the role only so that just gets all the names of the roles i want to return them as an array so we can do two array so that returns the results as an array instead of a collection and then the next thing we want to do we want to implode on this so we can just call the native php method implode and we want to implode with a comma and then we just need to close the implode off here so what this will do is this will loop over all the roles that we've got attached to this user and print them out comma separated you may have noticed here I, I, I type plunk instead of pluck so let's just fix that typo there pluck now if we come back over to our page and we hit refresh we can see it now lists out our roles so we can see the admin user we've updated and they have a role of admin and author so let's say we want to edit our author user now and we'll give them a role of author and user and let's call it update and you see now they have a role of author and user so next let's just set up our delete method so if we come over to our application and in our index here let's just get rid of this link and we need to create a form because we need to create a post so it's going to be a form with an action and we're going to go to we're going to go to the root of admin users destroy i'm going to give this a method of post and then inside of here we need to add our csrf token again with the blade helper and we also need to do our method field and this time we need to send the delete http method so this is again the same as the update we're sending a post but we're telling laravel actually this is a delete request now let's just grab our button and put this inside the form um, we're going to give this a type of submit instead of button we're going to keep the button warning and we're going to keep the text delete and we also need to let the delete method know what user it is we're trying to delete so up in our root method here as a second parameter we can just pass in our user so now laravel will know that we want to delete this current user in the table let's just refresh you can see the buttons are stacked let's just fix that now so on the button we just give it a class of float left and then also up in our edit button we can just give that a class of float left as well now let's just refresh so now over in our app http controllers admin users controller we're going to come into this destroy method so let's just die and dump on the user here and in our application let's delete our generic user so let's just hit the delete and you can see we're now in the delete method and we have our user information that we want to delete 
So before we actually delete this user, we want to remove their roles as well from the roles table. So we don't want to load a relationship sat in the table if we're not going to use them. It will slow the application down as the application grows. So the first thing we want to do is, because we're passing our user in from the form, we can say user, and we can call our roles relationship that we created on that model. And we can just call the detach method. And what that does, that removes all roles from the given user. Okay, so now we've done that, we can actually just delete the user now. So we can just say user, and we want to delete them. And after we deleted them, we can do a return, and we'll do a redirect again, I think. And we'll redirect back to the root of admin.users.index. Now, when we re refresh this page, it should remove all their roles and delete the user and redirect us back to the users page. You can see it's redirected us back to the users and our generic user is now deleted. So in the next video, we're going to look at guards and gates. And these are built-in features to Laravel that we can use to check on our roles and make sure the user that's currently logged in has the right role to do an action. So this page here, we probably just want to restrict this to admins.